So you want to take awesome Bible notes. You want to get in deep into the Greek and the Hebrew and get out those meaningful messages and pull out all of this richness out of your Bible studies. Today we're going to talk about word studies and how we take notes from our word studies directly in our Bibles, like through Bible journaling or Bible notes. We're going to talk about how my husband, Pastor Joseph, Hello. does word studies and preaches off of them. And it's just going to be all about word studies, how they impact our verse mapping and Bible mapping, how we follow themes, all of that good stuff. Let's begin. Before Joe and I started talking or dating or whatever you want to call it these days, I saw him walking through the hallways at our college and I peeked my head out of my dorm. I was an RA, so I was kind of just like bouncing around talking to everybody. And I said, oh, hey, Joe. And I said, hey. <laughs> And I said something along the lines of like, we should catch up sometime, which is ridiculous because we really weren't that close beforehand, right? That's right, yeah. And so she said we should catch up sometime, which to me, that was like, oh, she's trying to get close with me. She's trying to talk and get to know me a little bit better. Wink, wink. I was kind of being a little flirtatious, I guess. But the point is, she wasn't thinking anything of it or the phrase, and I was reading into it a lot. There we go. And the power of words, even when we're studying the Bible, has a really big impact. While I have said before in the past, like don't just like pull out Webster's and get like a random definition from a random word and run with it. There is something to be said on diving deep into specific words, really studying the biblical understanding or the biblical meaning of a word. And you really truly can get a lot from it. A few people have asked me recently to do a video on word studies. And I gotta be honest with you, they are really hard to film because oftentimes it's it's not like I sit down and I say, okay, I'm gonna do a word study now. I really like in the moment find it in the situation or the moment necessary to do a word study and I just naturally go into one like this morning. So this morning I was reading through the beginning of Jeremiah and the verse before I formed you in the womb, I knew you really stuck out to me. And I was like, wait, what did he know about me? And that really just had me thinking about my personal call to the ministry. And so I looked up that word new and in Hebrew, it's like yada is how I guess you would pronounce it in English. And it really added so much impact. Here, let me just show you how I took the notes on this little short word study. But right here, I took my notes on the word study, just a simple little paragraph. But I found in this simple, quick word study that it was so much more than just knowing. That same word is used throughout Genesis and other books of the Bible as when two married people act married. So it's like a really deep, intimate knowing that God knows us. So Joseph, do you want to tell them how you got to like this point of doing the sermon on this word, what your thought process and research process was and all that? All right, so I was looking through and trying to pick out a word that would best be helpful and used for the graduates. And so I was searching through, seeing like, what do I want them to go away with? What's one word that I want them to take away from this? And so I was looking through words. You think about grace, you think about goodness, you think about righteousness, holiness, all these things. But going through all these words, I also wanted there to be action for them to be called to action as graduates and called to action as the congregation, as people, as followers of Christ. And taking action, taking a stand, I was thinking about maybe kneeling, but then I was also thinking, what do you do as a step after prayer or at continuing on in prayer from kneeling is arising? And so I began to look in the Bible and see how arise was used throughout scripture. But most word studies that I do come from just reading through the scripture and seeing a word that sticks out to me. That's kind of two different aspects that you can take from word study, just wanting to go with a theme or seeing a specific word used in scripture and wanting to kind of drill deep. What does that word actually mm -hmm. mean? We like to or we tend to look up the word in Strong's Concordance, get a good definition from it. We use Brown Drivers Briggs. I've talked about all of those resources before in the past. A really easy free one that's online is Bible Hub. But once you're there, what is the main thing that you wanna look at when you're doing a word study? I know for me, it's the cross references. What other verses use that word? I mean, you wanna look at the tense that's used, like the ending of it. That doesn't matter in all the verses, but it's neat to know if it has like a different ending like a imperative or something like that, seeing where else in scripture it might have that ending as well. But also for me, definitely the cross references are what I go to most to see first where all it's used. Because when you look at the cross references and where it's used elsewhere, it gives you a better understanding and a picture of how what that word meant and how it's used. Now, when he was preaching the sermon, what I did was I went to the core 
basic main passage that he worked off of was which was the anointing of David in 1 Samuel 16 and I wrote all the other really important verses that I really wanted to have a strong correlation written right there in my Bible to this theme of arising. But what I really wanted to focus on was the covenant family because I noticed that word was in Genesis when God says, I will establish my covenant between me and you and your offspring after you as an everlasting covenant to be God to you. That word established there in Genesis 17 is the same word for arise. And then you bring it over to the New Testament and it says, arise, get up and be baptized. Also in Acts 22, 16, arise and be baptized. Joshua 1, go into the land that I have promised. Jonah 1, 2, and 3, to go into Nineveh. Luke 8, arising the little girl. Matthew 2, go to Egypt. There's so many pivotal, important points throughout the Bible that God has called his people to arise. And we serve a covenant God. So like Joe mentioned, we serve a God who keeps promises. A covenant is a promise. And you see covenants from the beginning to the end of the Bible. God always keeps his promises. And then how do you think word studies could lead people off track. In the past, I haven't made word study videos because they can get so in the weeds that you miss the big picture. Yes, here's a, a big caution. If you're doing word studies, maybe looking at numbers and you are thinking about allegory, which is you're sort of taking things out of context. So if you see a three in the Old Testament, a three in the next book over, and then a three in the New Testament, you can't just always bridge that together. Or you can't say David was taking three buckets over here, and that so that must be compared to Jesus's death and resurrection and those three days in the tomb. Whenever you're using your word study to sort of take things out of context, yeah, the whole point of a word study is to be faithful to the original author's intent. To truly understand, put yourself in that first century or BC shoes and really understand what they understood that word to mean. Yeah, in those BC shoes. BC shoes. Those BC shoes. We're going to start a new shoe brand. The BC shoes. BC shoes. <laughs> <laughs> also, with the word arise, it's so easy to then plug that into what Jesus has done for us and he arose from the grave, and Paul uses that arise so many times to talk about Jesus rising from the grave, and he's victorious over sin, death, and the grave. And so that's a further call to action and a great bridge to talk about Jesus, especially in a sermon. Do you guys see, like, the reason why I wanted to have Joe here and talk about his sermon was because this isn't a far stretch word study. It's not like we're taking some number or some, like, random word. It's a very common theme. It's a very specific word that was continually used over and over in conjunction or with promises, with promises that were being kept, with promises that were being reenacted. It's very ingrained in all of the different promises of the Bible. It's very ingrained in the storyline of the Bible at very pivotal, important parts. Origen was a really old church father. You guys may have heard of him. And that was one of his big falling points was he found too many allegories, too many meanings. He would say a word in the Bible has this meaning, but then it could also have this meaning and this meaning, this meaning, and you get to heresy real quick that way. <laughs> and not all like number things are problematic when you, Look at three in the Old Testament, Jonah in the belly of the fish for three days. That is a bridge to Jesus. But see, we know that because the Bible itself tells us that. The yep. Bible interprets itself. So the Bible will often take the symbolism throughout the Bible of numbers and stuff. And then we know we're not taking it too far. But we just really want to be careful when it comes to word studies. Now, you might ask yourself, well, when do I do word studies? I would tell you, I do not do a word study like every single day. I was reading a book and it brought up a specific verse that is very debated all over the church and all different denominations. I pulled out my interlinear Bible and was looking there at the Greek and then it led me to a word study. What exactly does that word mean throughout the Bible? You don't necessarily like sit down and say, it's time for me to do a word study. I haven't done a word study all day. You know, you want to do them when you're verse mapping. You're looking specifically at one verse and what that one verse means. That's the perfect time to do word studies and really break down the meaning of the word. What else, Joe? Yeah, and then just really whenever you're curious, whenever you're curious about a word, definitely when you're wanting to understand a verse better, definitely when you don't understand why that word is used there, just go ahead and lean into your curiosity with that. Go ahead and look it up. The Spirit might be leading you there to look further into it in your personal devotion life and to share with others. So that's super important. 
We encourage you guys, geek out, have a lot of fun, watch a bajillion videos on YouTube on how to use different resources and go deeper in your Bible studies. Now, if you guys wanna watch more videos with Joe and I talking about how to go deeper in your Bible studies, check out this playlist here. Or if you just wanna talk in general, how to read your Bible, how to go deeper, check out this video here and I will see you guys in these videos. Bye guys. Ooh.